Welcome to Tessellations Day 2. First, we're going to review what we did last time. Last time we did a translation tessellation, which means that we took a shape and cut it out of our square, and then we translated it or slid it up. So we did that in both of these. Now you could have done it the other way. You could have cut it out of this side and slid it to this side. All right, today we're going to do a rotation. So if I was to take the same object and I put it through this corner, a rotation, if you had an example, if you stood on your two feet, if this is one feet foot and this is the other foot, you would keep one foot planted or on the ground and you would turn this at an angle. So because we have a square, this is a 90 degree angle. So we're gonna rotate this or turn it 90 degrees, which means we take this shape and we keep that there and we turn it 90 degrees. Now I did see that some of you from the project for day one did a rotation. So if you did that, then you are going to need to redo that project and do a translation, which is just a slide. And then you can take the rotation that you did from day one and submit it for today. So we're gonna start out with again, our three by five card. And we're going to make a square out of it. So I'm gonna take this and put it to the corner like that. That wasn't very good. Now, if you don't do this real carefully and you don't get your sides lined up, then you're not gonna have a true square and that's gonna cause you some problems, but it's not um, unfixable when we go ahead and do our um, project. <clears throat> So here is my um, square. Now, I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. I'm not gonna put it through a corner. My puppy is over there having a dream. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Finn. <laughs> All right, so because I'm not gonna make it go through a corner today because I wanna do something a little different and show you a different way to do this, once we get our square cut out, I'm gonna fold it both ways. <laughs> so that way, and then I'm gonna unfold it and I'm gonna turn it and fold it the other way. Welcome to remote learning and all the crazy sounds that we hear. Now this will make sense once we get our shape cut out. So I'm gonna take my piece and because I want it to go through the middle of my shape, I am going to fold it over and then I'm gonna cut my shape out. Now you can draw it out if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna kind of free form it and I'm gonna go Kind of something like that. All right, let me see it. And I'm just gonna cut this out. See, I didn't really go on the lines, that's okay. This is your tessellation so you can make it however you want it. Mm. And if you're curious about what that little pipping sound is over there, I'll show you that in a little while. Hey, extra credit point. All right, so now I've cut my shape out and it's in the middle. So we're gonna rotate this. So first I'm going to open them both up. Here's my shape here and here's my shape here. Now, this is right in the middle, which is why I folded it and then I folded this. So we would know where the middle is for our rotation. So for this rotation, I'm gonna move it from the middle here and I'm going to turn it. So our rotation is a turn. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and then I'm gonna line up. I'm gonna draw a little line right here for the middle. So you can see where that middle is. And I'm gonna line it up 
and then I'm going to tape it. My tape is a little big, so I'm gonna have to cut it. Okay, there is my shape. So now I need to put this on paper. And I got a white sheet of paper today. And I am using a pen, and I'm using a pen just so you can see how this is done. I would like you to use a pencil, and this is gonna be important, and I will explain why that is um, once we get the shape drawn out. So just to make this easy, again, I'm gonna line it up in the corner of my paper, right on the edge, so that this edge and that edge line up now this is gonna take a little bit of a careful hand because we've got two pieces that wanna flip up and do crazy things. So make sure you're holding it down. You can hold down this side, trace here, and then move your hand over. Hold this side, trace around there. While you're still holding on, hold on to this side and then trace around. All right. So I'm gonna do this with the first one at regular speed so you can see, and then I will <clears throat> go ahead and kind of go through it a little bit faster. So I get to this point and I'm going to hold down with this hand, continue going around. And if you move it, go ahead and try and line it up again. I just move mine. So the reason that we are doing this in pencil is because when we go through at the end and put it on our paper, we're gonna outline it with a darker color. I didn't have you do that last time, and I'm gonna have you do that this time. I get this one. Okay, so there's my first one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do it through the rest of my paper. Now, if you see, I'm not lining it up here like this. I'm gonna actually have to rotate it again. So here I am rotating it, and then I'm gonna trace around this one. Now, I don't need to trace around this because that's already there. But I do need to make sure that my lines, especially up here at the top, are even. So sometimes that is going to mean that I'm gonna to have to move this just slightly up or down to make sure that this line comes across straight right here. So if I lined it up at the, at the edge of the paper and I just drew this line, I'm gonna make it a little thicker so that you can see that's what I'm talking about. It's kind of floating up in the middle there. And that's okay, especially if we're using a pencil when we do it. But if we make sure that our lines are lined up here so that when we trace it, it goes straight across, it'll be easier in the long run. Try and make it as straight as you can and then go ahead and go around your shape. Now that I have four shapes cut out, I need to move my object. And the first one I did was this way. So I'm gonna do it this way again. So you're going to line it up here and make sure that those lines are straight and then continue on. Okay, as you can see, I've gone through and done everything. Now I stopped and made sure that this area right here was a little offline so I could show you what I am doing. And then I also did that over here intentionally to make sure that I could show you what to do with these problems. Now, we're gonna wanna make sure that our lines are nice and clean and that we're taking some kind of a dark marker or colored pencil or even a pen to make sure these lines are dark. Now, I have a Sharpie marker, which would be perfect. You could use a black marker, you could use a purple marker, something that's really dark. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna trace all of our lines but we need to make sure that the intersections between our tessellations are real clean. So this one is kind of clean, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this point right here, 
this point right here, and then the point about the middle where it crosses through, which is somewhere in here. And I'm just gonna draw a straight line, and even if it's not perfect with where it was at, that's okay because I just want these lines to be very clean and intersecting so that there's not two lines that instead of a shape like a cross like that, instead of like this, if I would have done it the way I originally had it, it would have had a line here, a line here, and then a line like that. And that doesn't make for a very clean intersection. So we want a clean intersection like this, not like that. So go through your paper and make sure that all of those intersections, so this one right here, I'm just gonna draw a straight line. I'm not gonna worry about that line quite yet. This one looks a little off here and so does this one. Now you could go ahead and use a straight edge, that would be preferred. I'm gonna freehand it, because I've been doing this kind of stuff for a long time. Just nice, straight line. Perfect, all right. Now this one is a little off here too. You see how this line is a little over that way and this line is a little over that way. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna go straight line from this point to this point. And it's just gonna cross that wherever it happens to cross it. If it's not exact, that's okay. Like not exact where you drew your original lines, which is why we're drawing them in pencil first. Now this is the biggest problem area right here. So I'm going to pick a point that is here and a point that's here and draw my straight line. So I'm just going to go right here and right here, and I'm going to draw a straight line through that. Now, I'm going to use another 3 by 5 card just to help me for this one to make sure it's nice and looks great. So I just go straight through that. Now, you can see on the paper here where that other line was, and that's okay because you did it in pencil, so you can erase it easily. If you want to use another 3 by 5 card to go through all of these, that's great. If not, you're okay doing that too. And we're just gonna go through and um, put dark or black lines around all of it. Okay, so now we have our whole rotational trans, uh, rotational tessellation blacked out. And so now it's your job to go ahead and color this, make it interesting, um, and put a pattern in it, color the shape, do whatever you want. I don't know, this looks a little, to me, like an alien head. You could put like a little alien eye and a little mouth and yeah, I don't know, some interesting things. Anyways, try and make something neat out of it. Uh, if you can, it will help you when we get to the final part of the project.